Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I'm an Impressionist Realist Painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosnan of Steve Brosnan's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J.K.L. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic renderings, seascapes, landscapes, volcanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand in watercolor, identity, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And welcome to the podcast. You are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 87 for March the 8th, 2021. My name is Clyde J. Kell, and I'm here with my two best artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everyone. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. Thank you. You too. I always appreciate you two joining me each week here, keeping me company. And we usually have a very extensive conversation before we start the recording. And sometimes we almost say, oh, time's almost up. We better start this recording. <laughs> but we're talking about uh, dead chickens and whatnot, you know. Or <laughs> had yeah, a- we've had, we had several deaths in the family yeah. this weekend. So- <laughs> Got into her chicken pen and had a meal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He killed a peacock. He killed a guinea and he ate the chicken. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe he was trying to decide which meat he wanted. <laughs> but <laughs> oh boy. Generally, they go for the guineas, you know. But mm, that was painful to go out and find out. Life of the Sunday morning. Artist, life of an artist on the farm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, for our listeners, if you go to www.talkartpodcast.com, that's talkartpodcast.com, you'll see the link for our recommended discussion videos. And um, I tried to set up a little bit of a uh, two uh, points of view that kind of uh, contradicted each other. We had the first one there where the gentleman was talking about uh, what the five uh, five things that you can do to sell your art in 2021. And then mm-hmm. we had the uh, 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 art uh, dealer or curator uh, giving a discussion, and that was in uh, about 2015, I think, of uh, how artists, you know, can uh, professional career, which was rather interesting because COVID threw – has completely thrown all those things away (laughs) almost. And then the brief uh, video with the lady saying the, uh, what was it? The four things that uh, four advice or tips that was given to me that I should not have followed. And um, I just, uh, they, if you do a search on uh, YouTube, you will find based upon your term, search terms you will find all kinds of videos that 
contradict each other. Says, no, you know, you have to do it this way. No, you have to, do it. and from different time periods. So it's important that you look at the uh, date. It wasn't 15 years ago, <laughs> or if it was just recently, because things, especially with regards to the internet, things change. And that's kind of like our subject for uh, for this discussion is uh, the internet for artists. Uh, most artists, they think of only social media, but there is a lot more other facilities on the internet. And uh, Diane, help me out here. Uh, what are some of the things that you picked up from these videos or the information? Well, they were contradictory, but you know, then again, there's been a lot of changes in la even five, within five years. I mean, it, a lot of stuff has changed. But um, I think that's been a dilemma all along with the internet. There's so many options and trying to decide which ones that you can do, you know, effectively and trying not to overwhelm yourself because there's, oh my God, I, I, there's num numerous, I don't even know how many different websites that you can put your stuff on and, you know, but it's, you have to um, decide what's best for yourself and, what might be good for me, it might not be good for you, depending on what your audience is and the type of art you do. And it's, you have to analyze all that and see what um, is the best, what, what you think is the best option and which ones you can keep up with. Because some of the sites almost require you to make a daily post, if not more, multiple times in a day. <laughs> and other ones, you know, you're fine with once a week or even once a month, depending on what they are. And, um, so it's, you know, you have to look at your, how much your time you want to spend doing it and how much time you have available. <laughs> and you, you, I mean, you still need time to make your art and, you know, the other stuff that you have to do besides all the stuff online. So there's a lot of, lot to look into when you're deciding which venues to put your stuff on. Exactly. And that, that's why I, I kind of uh, selected these. I'm glad uh, Diane picked up the contradictory nature of, <laughs> of the videos because what it boils down to is that you have to really decide, um, am I going to pursue this career as a professional artist? And if so, how much of a commitment am I willing to make? You cannot ignore the Internet. You just absolutely cannot ignore it to your peril. You will just be gone. You, know, you won't make any progress at all. But you can utilize the various facilities to your advantage. But at the same time, you have to decide. Uh, you really have to to investigate and do your homework and decide what works best best for you based upon your own schedule, your time. Because in the end, you have to make art. You have to have time to make that art, you know, and, and, and you have to, uh, you know, have, uh, time to, uh, improve. You may have to take some courses or something, you know, to improve your skill set. Uh, that's, so that all figures into the time Constance, The what, what do you say? It is, it is, uh, it depends on, on where you, uh, for me, is what is it easy for me to do? Um, I found that some of the sites are a lot easier to work on for me than others. So therefore you get done quicker. Um, and the posting, I mean, you have to have social media, you have to have a website or work under somebody else's name, a website. And then if you can get on something else that sells prints or things for you, that's good. But keeping all of that in balance all of the time is, and then paint on top of it, it's, it's, uh, it's work. And, but, you know, that's the life you choose as an artist, but still doesn't mean it's not work. I mean, and it was contradict, you know, contradictory, but the one thing that we did watch of the gallery dealer, that was pre-COVID. The game is, to me, has changed a lot since COVID. Um, and when everything got shut down, even these galleries had to get online and they had to do it with a quick fashion, you know, because I'm sure they, they hurt last year. I mean, how could they not, you know? 
that's why I had watched the, that video before a couple of years ago, and uh, mm-hmm. it when it when it popped up on my on my search, I thought that would be a good you know to that's pre COVID. That's what it, his advice he gives is what it used to be. <laughs> it's not necessarily, and we don't know if it's going to go back to that or not. But for the time being. Uh, Everything that he suggested, you know, I was I was laughing when I was watching the video. I said, "Oh, brother, that's you know." And then I looked at the at the date and said, "Okay, it makes sense. He's not, you know." I, I would. It's pre COVID. I would love to to hear his opinion, you know, after COVID. What you know, what has his gallery done, you know, done to 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 deal with you know the COVID and. Uh, I think a lot of the galleries have really scrambled to get online in a big way. I mean, a lot of them were online, but it, to get online in a much bigger, bigger way, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Not just to have the opening posted online when you have it and do the invites and stuff like he was talking about, but you have to get your whole inventory online, you know, and to keep it current, that's not an easy thing. Well, even, even for individual artists in the Oklahoma City area, there is a lot of galleries, and all of them, not a single one of them, is online in a big way. They have very little. It's usually a one-page, two-page thing. They send out a, a newsletter, you know, a blog posting. It's not very impressive at all. <laughs> I have to tell you, when this hit. I was really glad that I had, I mean, I'm not online in a big way, but all the preliminary work that I've done with the social and the Etsy and the daily paint works, I was already set up. Whereas some of these artists had to start up all, all of it, all of it at once, you know, and I remember how daunting that was when I first started it. Oh, I mean, that, just well, that's, open that's the, the account, thing, like with us. Get the paintings yeah, we, up, <laughs> and then get yeah, it out on doing it. media. Yeah, go ahead, we've go. been doing it gradually as we could do it and learning yeah, for about uh, four along years the way. Now. Well, all these other plate people that haven't done that have to do, had to do it all right away. Well, all like it, it was, yeah. All at one time. I just can't imagine. That's why a lot of them aren't making it. They just It's just too much of a task. Before we started recording the podcast, you know, we were... <laughs> You know, a meeting and and you guys were you know picking my brain about this and that because I I have you know a technical background so that aspect of it was was rather easy for me you know and uh, I remember uh, when I would make certain suggestions my phrase I used to always say I'm going to drag you to a long kicking and screaming <laughs> 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 and, you know but you're right Diane we oh I just was just so far ahead. And I, you know, see postings on Facebook and other from some of these artists asking questions. That I just, they're just so naive, innocent. And I said, oh, my God. You, you know? <laughs> when I first opened my Etsy store four years ago, shortly after I moved up here, it was nothing <clears throat> but crickets. Nothing but crickets. And I have a whole lot more people visiting my store <laughs> than I used to. And uh, yeah, it's <laughs> so that's good. I mean, the sales are are better. You know, they're not outstanding, but they're better. It's a crawl, is what it is. And yeah, well, it all it, takes time. It really it depends, takes time, right? It de- it de- yeah. it depends on the amount of traffic. But that is the trick: is getting that traffic to your site, and that's what takes time. You know, with the branding. Because I did a lot of work doing branding and stuff for my jewelry, you know. I haven't done the branding for the the paint, the art yet, but I've been. I feel like I've been all over the place painting. <laughs> but for the jewelry, I did a lot of branding when I first started back up. Well, secondary, secondary to the traffic, it's not so much as the uh, it's the quality of traffic too, because it uh, on Instagram you can get you know millions of followers but if nobody buys anything or you know you, you right. want you want you want the quality of uh 
of uh, visitors and uh, potential purchase. And that's the, that's the, that's the art of it or the trick of it. And it, there are so many, you know, marketing coaches and mentors that they, you know, that the advertiser program will do this and that. Some of them are scams. Some of them are very valid, but in the end, it all comes down to what we've said at the first beginning is you have to decide how much stress you want to put yourself through, <laughs> what your schedule is, and what direction you know, you, you want to take uh, you know take your career. When uh, you know Diane said you know it takes time. I when I I immediately uh, went online because that's my forte. So I immediately signed up with Fine Art America and Redbubble and Society Six and Zazzle and I think I was on Beta, you know, and I was on there for a year and a half before I got my very first sale. Mm-hmm. So I ordered a pillow on Redbubble and I got three dollars. Boy, I was so excited and happy, yeah. You know? <laughs> Well, since and you did that, you did that, and I tried to do all that like you did. I burned out. I had to bring it back, scale it back to just a few places, because but I, I got I actually I think part of my problem in September this winter. I think I did have like Gary says a burnout. Yeah, and because my, for like four months now, I know it's been a lot of migraines and stuff, and I've been down, but I think maybe. Partially, it was burnout also you know, you, from you, doing all that listing and listing and listing. You know, I still don't have everything that I have in the jewelry department listed on Etsy. You know, and then go to do the Fine Art America and the Daily Paint Works and then the FASO. That's like four places and you're still doing Facebook, Instagram, you know, so that's, it's. Well, you two, uh, you know, you heard me you know, before say, talk about us before and for our listeners who haven't, um, I actually, it wasn't until, uh, 2019, 2019 was when I started hit every single month was the very first year, every single month for the entire year, 2019, I would have one or more sales from one of those sites every single month, mm-hmm. 2020, the same thing. 2021, you're starting out good. It's just saying, I haven't got to sell for March yet. Well, that's good. I got to sell for January and for February. Sometimes it's only one or two items, sometimes it's only three or four items, you know, from, from the different. These, it's certainly not, not enough to, uh, you know, support my art career. But here is my attitude. I use these sites, I use them as a way of a form of branding, a way of getting the word out you know, about, about my art, that I am a, that I'm a professional working artist. If I sell something from those sites, because all those sites don't cost me, they cost me nothing, absolutely nothing. Uh, if I sell a home decor product from those sites, that's like, that's free money. That's like candy. It's yeah. gravy. That's yeah. what I always call it gravy. That's what prints are gravy. And it's, <laughs> and it's a, it's a, a, a personal boost because the variety of products is incredible. I mean, these are complete strangers that, you know, like my art and they've got it on, you know, different products and everything. So in the videos, you know, the contradiction is if the point is, if you can, if you have the skills, I have the technical skill set. So that side did not bother me at all. If you don't have that skill set, then sh- yes. Going on multiple sites is not a good thing. You're going to get yourself bogged down. <laughs> but if you have the skill set, and then if you're able to schedule, you know, the, with your with your uh, work, you know, your your work life, then yes, they're a good thing. It's an easy way to get the word out there, you know, about your art. One last thing. The last video was from uh, Gary Vanacek. I thought it's so important. That was the first one I watched. Okay, the mind- mindset you need to avoid dying, yeah. burnout, burnout. Yeah. And I thought that tied in with this thing because you can get burn burnout very easily by doing all these things. Because as a, as a, as a working professional artist, um, 
I need to actually, there's a blog. I've been formulating for a week now. I got another, another blog posting. I'm going to about this, uh, that, uh, in my last blog post in the last line, I said, uh, you know, uh, if you're interested, send me an email. It's simple. It's, you'd be surprised how simple it is. Something like that. I did get a comment, simple, explain. So I'm going to explain with the next blog that I said, simple, not easy. <laughs> well, the, the thing is like, even like when we all started, we, we did so many trial and error kind of things, you know, mm -hmm. trying to find something that would work and you know, it doesn't work. So you switch to something else and try that, try that thing for a while. And I mean, it takes time to really iron down what you're trying to do and how to, how best to do it without um, wasting tons of time and, you know, and, and money because we do need time to and money. Yeah. Cause we do need that to be able to produce our work, you know, our artwork. And <clears throat> so I really feel for people that didn't try, you know, hadn't been do, trying all these different things all this time, you yeah. know, up until this point. <clears throat> and like last year, if they hadn't had any kind of online presence, I just don't, I mean, it took us a while, like we've been doing it for years, you know, trying to get all these things ironed out and what works best for us. Yeah. And I just yeah. can't see that, you know, most other artists are going to be able to do that unless they've been keeping up with stuff. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. They'll just it's have to the same do with like the gallery, day, you know, too. just start, you know. It was what, uh, you know, what Gary said, you know, the, uh, yeah, the, 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 mi the mindset you've got to, you've got to have, you've got to be doing you got to enjoy the process and you, ha yeah. you really have to, you know, uh, put yourself into it. Uh, if not, uh, don't, I hate to say this, but if you can't enjoy the process, then don't do it. Just paint for your personal enjoyment, but don't, don't have lofty, you know, I'm going <laughs> to, a professional artist and everybody's going to love my art and I'm going to be famous. And then a year later, I'm not making any progress. What's going on? This sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, you go through that. You do go through that because, because, you know, you try things and they don't work and you, you, know, you don't, things aren't happening the way you think they will. And you, you have to have crickets. the fortitude to just keep trying stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's you a, have to be stubborn. You, know, <laughs> you have to be stubborn. And to avoid the burnout, I mean, you have to limit how many plate. You know, you can't spread yourself too thin. You have right. to just right. do one or two things at a time until you get those under your belt. I think, as really, far as that go goes, it, some of them are. Some people are. All of them have different formats. The way you put <laughs> them together, and for me, it depends on how easy is that site for me to work with you know if i go through putting two or three things up and it's like pulling teeth then i just like i, I go try another one and then eventually you find the ones that you your brain will wrap around using you know and i have to say it daily paint works it's very easy for me but faso it's for me it's been like pulling teeth and i'm really considering backing out of faso i don't i don't know that i am getting much out of that not that i'm getting much out of daily paint works but it's easier for me to set up each painting on there and it looks good yep you know when i have you like, can't figure out how to use something then i get really frustrated in a hurry my my scenario lie described it works for me i've got my work routine down you know to to uh yeah when I, after I create a piece and after I get a good photograph of it, then I, I have to convert the image to like about three different formats for the site, you know, the sites and, you know, different resolutions. And then it takes me about an hour and a half to get them all uploaded. <laughs> it's just a matter of sitting down, you know, and starting the process up, filling the form out, typing in the form, you know, and, and, and yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. You, you've, you've already you're already technically advanced you know compared to a lot of artists and so you have that behind you and so you know you you've developed a process to do it and you didn't just start that process all of a sudden out of thin air it's taken you time to set that up and get 
you know, your mm -hmm. setup going and, you know, somebody new coming in, it's just going to, it's going to be. <laughs> it's work. Daunting. Don't think it's yeah. not work. It's work. Just because you can put it out there doesn't mean it doesn't take work to get it done. <laughs> it does take work yeah. to get it done. And you have to balance that time between working on that part of it and being able to paint and not let yourself get too frustrated so that you can't, you know, you're going, why am I doing this? I keep banging my head up against the wall. I want to just paint, <laughs> you know, and we all just want to paint, but if, unless you do this other part, it's, it's never going to happen for you. No, I don't want to give the impression that everything is all rosy because yeah, I get burnt out too. I sometimes with the, uh, because I've got, uh, I've enrolled in an online class, that painting class that I'm taking, and there's assignments for that. And I sometimes don't, that gets me, you know, a little burnt out there. <laughs> I've got independent work that I want, that I want to do. And then I've got, plus, in the middle of all this, I run an internet radio station. <laughs> so I've got the programming for that. So you do have a side hustle too. See, with, with Diane and me, it's the ranch and the farm. And the garden, for me, it's the garden because I'm, I'm determined to turn this place into something that looks nice. <laughs> you know, and in between the gardening and the, I'm putting, I'm trying to put in trees and hydrangeas and things that I can use in still life, you know. So there's just no end to gardening when you've got 35 acres. <laughs> so, in other words, you're trying to make your farm so you can paint it, huh? <laughs> yeah i mean you know and you put trees and stuff in but when you have to put them in from you know small <laughs> even though they're three or four inches tall three or four feet tall i mean a magnolia tree takes how long to get beautiful just, you know 10 years <laughs> you know so i'm gonna wait for 10 years before you paint a magnolia tree yeah <laughs> yeah but i'm gonna put i'm putting in hydrangeas this year and i want to put some azaleas in Diane's i really miss azaleas <laughs> and rose bushes i've tried putting rose bushes in and they just croak so i i want roses but i just have to figure out how to have them you know i might have to plant them in containers or something okay you know. this was an artist friend's podcast <laughs> turned it into gardening today <laughs> well no because you can use your flowers to paint still lives you know God says, I love you. I love you. <laughs> You're just picking on me. I know you are. <laughs> Diane was, was knew what I was going for. It was, what I was talking was going right over your head. <laughs> I think with that, we'll wrap this up, okay? Because I, I, I've listened to previous podcasts, and sometimes we get a little preachy and a little on our kick. The, the sum everything up, the sum it up is that this artist's life, this artist's career can be very rewarding, but you have to be. And frustrating. <laughs> you have, yes, and frustrating. You have to prepare. You have to have, like Gary Vanchuk says, the right mindset for the, for the burnout because you are going to get burnout at times. You are going to get discouraged at times. You're going to hear no, 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 no from everybody around you, but it is rewarding. When you when you success, because let me tell you, there is nothing for me, nothing that makes me higher and, and gets my endorphins up is when somebody buys my art, a complete stranger buys my art because they bought it because they wanted to put it on their wall or they wanted to wear it or they wanted to have a pillow or something. They wanted that art and that that in the end result. All the struggle, all the heartache, all the hours, hours of not selling anything, and it's worth it. Like I always say uh, in uh, my blog, my, in, in my blog post, um, if my art can uh, put a uh, twinkle in the eye and a smile on the face of the, of the viewer, then I have accomplished my task. And I think that's... Uh, We'll end it there. You've been listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 87 for March the 8th, 2021. And I've been talking with uh, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. Now, before we end, Diane, where can people find your art on, on the Internet? I'm at 
www.dianehuntstudio.com. On uh, that's my website, and then I'm on an Instagram, same thing, Diane Hunt Studio, and Facebook, Diane Hunt Studio. <laughs> Constance, what about you? Um, the, my paintings can be found at Daily Paint Works. Um, just type my name in, and then I have the Etsy store, which is www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C B R O S N A N S. And then um, I have a FASO site, which is, I think it's your name in fine art. So um, just type Constance Brosnan fine art in, and it will pop up. Okay. And you can find my main site. Site main main domain is uh, cjklartworks.com. Right now, I've got that pointing to my daily uh, paintworks uh, site, and there's also links on that site for my other stuff. Plus, if you just go into Google and you type Clyde J. Kale space and the word artist, you will find me listed everywhere. <laughs> if you go to Google and you type in Diane Hunt artist, you'll find her. You go in and do the same thing with Constance Bronson. They'll pop up. Probably not as much as I do, but I check. I keep an eye on them. I check to make sure <laughs> they're, they're doing something, and uh, they'll they're pop up. So for our listeners, uh, if you want to uh, check out the artwork of three outstanding artists, please check us out. I'm going to say goodnight to Diane and to Constance. Let Diane say goodnight to everybody. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Constance. Good night, everyone. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Diane. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening. Good night, folks. Thank you so much for listening. And as always, if you like these podcasts, please give us a uh, high rating and a uh, thumbs up. And check out our websites. Check out our artwork. Bye-bye until next time. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronson at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash c-b-r-o-s-n-a-n-s Clyde J. Kell at www.cjkaleartworks.com If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com if you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or a star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.